Thank you so much, Famo, for that song. Um, looking at the statistics, Christianity is growing in the world. Many people are tending to be Christians. But it's like just casting a net where it's drawing just every Jim and Jack. Adulterers are coming into the church. Those who practice witchcraft are coming into the church. Liars are there. Jealous people. It's good. But in the end, God is going to do the selection. You and I have not been given the mandate to say who is going to be here. But God alone. At the day of reckoning, God is going to say, you have been faithful, now come and enter into my kingdom. Um, we are going to be using the hymn 237. For you and I to be faithful, we need to stand for Jesus Christ. The song 237 says, stand up, stand up for Jesus. As we live in this world, it is up to you or up to me to choose to say, whom I am, am I going to stand for? Um, there is a conflict going on, on planet Earth. And the contestants are two. Jesus Christ, the Almighty, and the devil himself. And you have to know this, there is no one who is neutral. Everyone is going to, everyone is playing a part in this conflict. Either on the part of Jesus or on the part of the devil. You are either at one of the sides, Jesus or the devil. Whenever you see good things, those good things are coming from the Lord Jesus Christ. But whatever is evil, it is from the devil. So we as human beings either belong to Jesus and stand for him or the devil and be used by the devil in this world. And when we stand for Jesus, his power will be manifested in us. Today, we are going to use the book of Ruth to see some individuals whom God used, uh, whom Jesus used. Waste in this world. So we are going to study the book of Ruth. Uh, scholars say this book, uh, there are different views, but I've taken the view that this book was authored by the prophet Samuel. Let's read the book of Ruth from Ruth chapter 1, verse 16. We are going to read that, that this and then expound on the word of God. Ruth chapter 1, verse 16. And Ruth said, I'm using the King James Version, KJV. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I'll go. And where thou lodgest, I'll lodge. Thy people shall be my people. And thy God, my God, shall we bow our heads as we pray. Our dear, loving, heavenly Father, we have gathered in this place after going through our studies in the morning that now you can refresh our minds with your words. You have chosen me as your instruments to speak on your behalf. Before I continue, I rededicate and recommit myself into your hands that your power should be manifested in me. Your children who are here, some of them, they trust in you. They have faith in you. But others, maybe, they don't yet have faith in you. For those who already trust you, increase their faith. But for those who don't trust you, who don't have faith in you, help them, Father, to begin trusting in you. May your name be lifted up through this sermon. May you be glorified and may you your divinity prevail as humanity diminishes. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. The book of Ruth was written at a time when 
the Jewish nation was at a very low stage. And in this book, we see that even in times of crisis and deepest despair, there are those who follow God and through whom God works. Why were the state of, of affairs like this in the nation of Israel? When you go back to the book of Judges, the last verse, uh, Judges chapter uh, 21, verse 25, the Bible says, in those days, there was no king in Israel. And this, uh, as you continue, that every man did that which was right in his own eyes. You know, God in his own wisdom puts people to help mankind to make right choices. Some of them can be kings. At an institution like this one, in the, at the synagogue, the principal, at the primary, the headmaster, at the university, there are authorities there to help us keep uh, the rules of the school or the college. So kings are in society to help enforce some rules, to help some people to follow, I mean, to help people follow the right things. But unfortunately, during this time in the nation of Israel, there was no king. And because there was no king, everyone did whatever he or she liked. The phrase was, just like today. Today we might have the kings, we might have the presidents, we might have whatever we have, but because of the issue of rights, people are doing whatever pleases them. They can eat whatever they want to eat. They can behave in a way they want to behave. No one controls them. You tell a girl or child, please come here at 6. Don't come at 9 p.m. You are going to meet things out there. And she tells you, I've got my own rights. Leave me alone. So the nation of Israel, it was like this. Uh, 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 according to some of the lighters, people did whatever they wanted uh, this was a period of disobedience to authority. There was a lot of idolatry and violence was there. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen, children of God, whenever people decide to be living the way they wanted to live, they only invite more problems on their lives. That's when, when you read the the. Uh, the first uh, verse in chapter, Luke chapter 1, verse 1. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. All the good things on this planet, they come from the Almighty God. The food which, which we eat. If you want to enjoy a good life, it comes from God. But when human beings decide to disobey God, when human beings decide to rebel against God, it is not God who suffers. It is human beings who suffer. If there's death today, God told Adam and Eve, all of the fruits in the garden you can eat, but what is on the middle, don't eat it. The day you eat it, you're going to die. That's why there are funerals at the hospital today. And now, it was only disobedience of not eating the food which has caused a lot of these problems. Now, this generation is increasing the problems. We are becoming more rebellious to him. So, the famine came as a result of disobeying God. You read uh, the Bible, Deuteronomy chapter 28, you read the whole chapter. God told the Israel that if they obey his word, he's going to bless them. They will have food. He's going to protect them. But in this verse, because of their disobedience, because of their disloyalty, in the end, famine came. And 
when you lead them, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. Beth, the, the word Bethel means house, those who have done Hebrew, him, a house of bread. Bethlehem. Bethlehem, Judah, was supposed to be a house of bread, to have plenty of food as long as they obeyed God. But this time around, in Bethlehem, Judah, there was no bread, there was famine. And when problems come, some people persevere, but others don't persevere. The family of uh, the family of uh, uh, the family of El Melik did not persevere. They could not continue living in Bethlehem, Judah, where there was no food. And as a family, there was uh, the wife. And two boys, unlike in my home where you got a boy and a girl. And they agreed, let's move to Mo Let's go down to Moab. You know what? The Israelites were not permitted to mingle with the Moabites. God told them not to. But sometimes circumstances can make you mingle with people you are not supposed to mingle with. There is no food in Bethlehem, Judah. And what did we do? We still go to the Moabites. The Moabites have plenty of food. Sometimes you tend to wonder, God's children have no food, but those who practice evil have plenty of food in their homes. You know what? God does it deliberately that they see his love. He loves all. He's, he, he does not discriminate. His lens fall upon each and every person. I'm not going to mention any class of people. Otherwise, I might be called to a, a press conference and apologize. I don't want to face that situation. Hallelujah. The Moabites have got food and they go down. They completely forgot what God has told them. But, you know, in everything, God is in control. And he overrules events to his own favor. So they go down there. Indeed, they find a lot of food. They begin eating. But you know what? Life has got a lot of problems. Our friends, the English people say, life is but a mess. You solve a problem and you create some more problems. That is about life. You know what? Human solutions are not lasting. The only lasting solution which can bring about peace and tranquility in a human being are those solutions from the almighty God. But your solution and my solution are a temple. You solve this problem and another problem pops in. In the past, our parents used to do farming without using fertilizers. And the soils were not producing enough. And some people came here and taught us that you have to be applying fertilizers. We have now started applying that there are still more problems coming. Human solutions are not lasting. So, as they are there, Elimelech dies. Food cannot make you to live. You can be in abundance of food, but you can still die. Life is not about food. Life is about Jesus Christ. That is why you have to stand for Jesus. You know, most of the sins which are happening today, it's because of food. People want to eat and they start stealing. People want to eat and they start committing adultery to find money to buy food. All of the corruption is because of the food. You know, where man first fall was because of food. If you, have, if you cannot control your appetite, you are in trouble. Because most of the problems of humanity arise from food. So, though food was plenty, but Elimelech died. And whilst they are the boys, Malon and Kirion, decided to marry. We have grown up here. 
We are no longer in Bethlehem, Judah. We are no longer seeing the girls of Bethlehem, Judah. The only girls we can see are the Moabite girls, so we are going to marry them. Deuteronomy chapter 20, 23, this uh, free God forbid intermarriages between the Moabites and the Jews. But what do they do? I want to tell you, you marry where you are. If you are going, if you be living in Intopwa, you are going to get married in Intopwa, in Bangui. If you be living in Ingona, in Ilongu, you are going to get married in Ingona. If you want to marry somebody in Area 47, they go and sit in, go and be living in Area 47. You marry where you are. I married my wife 27 years ago where I was teaching. We met there. And you can also get married here, the same people you are living with. <laughs> and this is a good place to know one another. You know, when people at, at a university, they show their true colors. If you can't find one here, I don't know. <laughs> You'll find the fake ones out there. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So the boys decide to marry. And after being married for 10 years, I don't know whether it's happy that the Bible is not clear, but after 10 years, the young man dies. That's a challenge in this world. Now, it means Naomi is left alone. All of those who are close to her by blood and by faith are gone. She is only remaining with Ruth and Opa the daughters-in-law. That is life. And you see, I was, I, I was just thinking to myself, saying, I think men are an endangered species. It's only men who are dying and not the women. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, most of the people who have died are men. And I'll tell you the reason why. And even when you go out there, uh, the churches have, um, have pastored in the churches, we got many widows more than spinsters. Those of you who do research, please help us to do a research. Why, why is this like that? We got more widows than spinsters. But I was just, I, without doing any, by observation, I think the challenge with men is they carry a lot of burdens. Paying school fees, paying the electricity bills, we got a lot of burdens. Oh, there's this challenge at home. It's on you. And the other, we, and the other problem with men, they depend much on human solutions. They think by their, their power, they can solve problems. And the, problem, the other problem with a lot of men and boys, they don't express what is paining them. They keep it to themselves. And that's why even when you look at the statistics of those who commit suicide, it is men. Go and ask the police people. They will tell you. Many men today and boys are committing suicide. Why? They don't want to tell of their problems. They keep it to themselves. And they begin suffering from mental issues. And the, problem, the other problem is they don't cry easily. Somebody told them that males don't cry. <laughs> that is a false, that's a fallacy. Cry when things are painful. The relationship has ended. She has ended it. Cry. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't leave crying to the girls only. You also have to cry. You are human beings who got emotions. So that is why we are dying earlier men. The only time we see a man crying is when his money is stolen. <laughs> Even at a funeral, it's the women who do crying. Women, we congratulate you for always crying. God bless you. That's why you live long. <laughs> and now, when you go to Ruth chapter 1, verse 6, the Bible says that Naomi decided to go back home. The Bible says, in the last ten, it says, uh, uh, 
the Lord had visited people in giving the blood. You know, the problem which was in Bethlehem, Judah, came to an end. I want to register it to you. Every situation comes to an end. You might be going through difficulties, ways to your studies. Where to get your next fees, you don't know. Where to get your tuition, you don't know. But God will see you through. Others have gone through the same. Others say, every problem has got its expired date. God will visit you and is going to make you happy one day. Just remain in his presence. Continue knocking and praying to him. And one day, he will see you through. This is what happened in their house food. And uh, Naomi says, yes, I have buried my husband here. I have buried my two sons here. But I ba go have to go back home. East or west, home is best. Though planet Earth can give you whatever it can give you. A very nice husband, a very nice wife, all the things of plan, a very beautiful mansion. But this is not your home. Our home is in heaven. So always think of your home. Now, she started to go back. And the two ladies, Opa and Ruth, begin escorting her. At first, she thought they are just escorting. When they reach the borders, when they reach the borders of Israel, then Naomi says to the ladies, she says, uh, and this eight, and Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. You have been such good daughters-in-law to me. Obedient. We could eat it together. We could laugh together. But fate has made it that now we are going to separate. In this life, there are times where comes a time when even though you have been good friends, you do separate. Those people, your measures, one day you are going to separate. I had my measures. We no longer meet today. Others are dead. Others are still living. But we no longer meet. So time comes for separation. And this is the time we are going to separate. Go back to your home. Verse 9. The Lord grant you that you may find rest. Go back. I want you to go back and find rest in your homes. You know what? God created the homes that people should be finding rest. After you have gone through a rough day, you have been at work, people may be shouting at you. When you have gone through difficulties, when you go back home, you need to find rest. But unfortunately, most of homes today, they are restless. That's why you find some people, they are like workaholics. They wake up to 11 p.m. night. They are afraid of going home. There is no peace at their home. So they, as, they act like they are a workaholics when they are not. Go and ask them. Of course, if they are men, they are not going to tell you. At Kawari, I'm close to a place they call it my chance. You find a lot of cars even at 10 p.m. Some of them, they go to drink their problems away from them. You know, when you see some people drinking, they cheat themselves that they are going to end their problems through drinking. Let me register it to you, ladies and gentlemen. You don't solve your problems by drinking. The only problem solver is Jesus Christ. Take them to them. You know, he says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, come unto, you, unto me, you are heavy laden and, and labor, that I can give you rest. The only rest which human beings can find in this troubled world can only be found in Jesus Christ. If you want peace, Everlasting peace. Peace which even the enemy cannot disturb you. Where even there, is, there are storms, where there are problems. You don't have money. You don't have school fees. You have performed badly in an exam. You know, it's not always that you are going to do well in class. No. Sometimes you do fail an exam. It happens. You are not the first one. Others failed. Uh, but today there are big people in society. Only that don't give up. So even when things are not going on well, but when you trust in Jesus, 
when you come to him, he's going to give you everlasting peace. He's the only source of peace. So he says, go and find him. We are going to find peace. The two ladies clung to now. They said, you have been such a very good person. You know, uh, if Naomi behaved in a bad manner, the girls would not have uh, clung to her. You only cling to people who are good to you. Naomi had demonstrated that she was a good person. She lived for, you know, Christianity is not the doctrines. Christianity is not the churches. Christianity is not singing in the farm. Christianity is the way you live. The way you treat others. When you show kindness to others, when you respect other human beings, when you don't judge them, these ladies were more, more bites, you know, more, more bites. I can visualize that people like Luffy would put on a miniskirt at times. She was from Moab. In Moab, do you think, can, you, can somebody put on a long skirt? But now never judged them. Let them to do. But he was, he, she, also, but the only thing they could do is they could see now putting on a long skirt. Said, this is the way to dress up. If people are learning to learn from us, if people are be, to be Christianized, they have to see a good example in Christians. Those of you who are Christians at this institution, live by the word of God. Stand up for Jesus. Let others see Christianity in you. The greatest argument against Christianity is a lovable Christian. So they say, we don't want to quit with you. Yes, we can get married in Moab. But the boys in Moab, they smoke marijuana and others use drugs. And because of the drugs and the marijuana, they'll be beating us. We don't want that. Better to follow you. Ladies, the marriages you see today, most of them have got problems because the people who are living there, they are not Christians. They can profess to belong to a certain denomination, but they treat one another badly, poorly, and they are not finding peace. Boys, same thing. So, the problem with today, people are just saying, as long as I get my, as long as I got, I, I'm, I'm called Mrs. So, so. Uh, some of your friends just got married because they want to have that accolade of being a missus, but they are facing it. The husband comes at 2 a.m. She sleeps alone all this time. Can you call this one married? In Chichewa, you call this is what it is. Hey, and somebody who is not married, they are just like the same. A couple of days ago, somebody came to me and said, since I got married, pastor, the man has never bought anything in the, I buy the things on my own. So I was saying, what's the reason of then getting married? Now, he just added a burden to her because he even fits the, she, hits, she fits the kids and even the, the husband. She, the husband depends upon her. She can even go into debts and she asks the wife to go and pay the debt. So, don't just think of getting married for the sake of getting married. These relationships, they have to be prayed for. Give me the right man. Give me the right wife, the right woman that in the end you live happily. Uh, let me continue the story. When Opa had this, that when you go to my nation, you, the chances are you are not going to get married. The only people who could marry you were my sons. And I can no longer bore other sons. Those people are dead. And even if I get married, I'm old. I can no longer get married. 
bear children and tell them that marry because it's only the children of Noam who can marry a Moabite, not the, those people in uh, Israel. They cannot marry you. They, I think in mind she remembered that this uh, Deuteronomy 23 verse that no Jew should get into any relationship with a Moabite. And when you are speaking to two people, two people listen to things differently. That's why in the same classroom, the same lecture, one gets a straight A and one gets a D. They are listening different. I remember then in Form 4, we had a very good mathematics teacher. But unfortunately, I was not listening properly. I got a straight nine and my friends get, got straight ones. That's why I just said that I just tried to be reading the Bible. You don't need much mathematics here. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm, so, Opa says, what? At my age, not getting married? No. That's an unstarter if that is English. I'm going back to Moab. No matter how people of Moab are, I have to go back. But Rufi says the words which we read. Mother-in-law, I'm not going back. I don't want to get married to Moabites. They are evil people. But I want to be with the children of God. You know what? When I am, because the reason I am following you, I'm following you for, uh, for the also reason that uh, whether thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodge, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people. And the last station, and thy God shall be my God. I have decided to follow Jesus. Not turning back. I will follow Jesus. I will follow your God. I am falling in love with your God. A God who takes care of people. A God who feeds. A God that when I die, I shall be resurrected. And she went. Became a greener. Because of time, I'm going to cut the sermon short. She goes into the Israel nation. He, she abandons. She leaves plenty. You know, some people are going to fail to go to heaven because of things. But this that says, may the food remain. But I want to be with the children. And when she goes there, God blessed the loaf. The first day she was there, they had no food. And she goes, you know, when you are in the presence of God, when God is guiding you, he leads you where you can find good things. There were so many fields in the land of Israel. But God says, these other fields you are not going to benefit. Go to the field of Boaz. And she went into the field of Boaz. Began greening for the whole day. And Boaz went to Jerusalem. As he's coming, Boaz was rich. He was, yet, he was not yet married. Young men, you can become millionaires before you get married. <laughs> Let me quote Reverend Yasin Gama. He says, don't think you are going to make it when you are married. He was giving an, this illustration. This time you are not yet married. You got your 20 relatives which depend, which will be depending upon you. Get married. Your wives also have got many relatives which depend, will be depending upon her. Maybe 30 of them. So 30 plus 20 is coming to 50. So, you know, when you get married, it means you are joining the two families. When there is a funeral at her home, you have to attend that funeral. And that is going to require money. When you go to a funeral, they invite you, come. Let's discuss. For you to show that you are a genuine man, you have to cough out something. Otherwise, if you don't cough out any money, they'll be sending you. So don't cough out any money. So don't fall into that stretch where they just use you. They have to say, Apongoza, wera. And when Apongoza comes, he's going to assist us. So don't marry, don't get married before you become a millionaire. Boaz was rich. He was a wealthy young man, but you're not yet married. There are some, they just get a few men and they decide to get married. 
<laughs> Even in the garden of Eden, before Adam was given, if he was given a garden, fruits to eat. Don't get married before when you are not yet prepared. Some of you get married when you don't have things. And you continue going to beg to you from your parents. They, are, they now have two twins, yourself and your husband. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Boaz looks at Ruth and he says, who is this one? And the servants do answer Boaz, this one is a widow. The one who came with Naomi said, okay, all right. And he, she, he looks at Ruth. Let me tell you, ladies, she was not in makeup. Would you go to the garden in, with makeup? No. We, we, it, when you, sweat was, she started waking in the morning. Sweat was everywhere. No ambition, Baba. <laughs> but you know what? When Boaz looks at her, he says, please, madam, don't go to green to any other place. Be greening here. Kutaka tirantaji up. You, be, you have to be coming to this garden. You have to be here. And he told the servants, you servants, add something even on top of her. And that day, as she was going back home to Naomi, she brought in a lot of gifts from Boaz. You know what? When somebody gives you something, you don't give without loving. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten, that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hallelujah. Before he gave his son, God loved us. Some of you have been in a relationship. This is now the second year. He or she has not given you anything. If it were me, I would have ended the relationship. <laughs> Doesn't love me. I don't want lip service. Demonstrate that you love me by giving. But when you give me, no strings attached to it. Because when other they give, they said, so I've given you, you know, I've scratched your back, scratched my back also. <laughs> no, 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 no. Now, in the end, Naomi led between the lines. You know, all the people are very good. When you see these old ones, please don't run away from them. Meet them. These old people which you see, the old people, my doctor here, Dr. Nazombe, you see doctor, doctor, don't run away from, these people have much wisdom. They lead between the lines. Now, he says, can he just give? It means Boaz has fallen in love with Ruth. And in chapter 3, she develops a scheme where Ruth is going to propose uh, Boaz. The way what, what, how it was written in chapter 3 it only fits in the Jewish culture. It cannot fit Kumalawi. Then it will be your funeral. In Malawi you could have some other ways of proposing to a young man. Here it was Ruth who proposed the marriage. And in the end, Ruth got married to Boaz. And when Ruth got, Boaz to, got married to Boaz, her status changed. You know what? When you get married to a noble person, your status changes. You might not marry to any man on the planet if you can get married to Jesus Christ and it's going to change your status. From a thief to a saint. From an adulterer to a saint, he, he changed Rahab. Ruth also has to, you know, Ruth is a progenitor of Jesus Christ. If you want to stand for Jesus Christ, if you want to be faithful forever, till death is going to change everything in life. May God bless you as you contemplate to be faithful forever and to stand for Jesus. How many of you are saying, Father, God, I want to be faithful forever and I want to stand for you in this dark and evil. How many of you are saying so? Can you stand wherever you are? I would like to request Dr. Nazombe to offer a word of prayer. I have also risen my hand. I want to remain faithful as a pastor till death, till 
that day when I'll be entered to be faithful. Till Jesus comes that I be faithful. So Dr. Nazombe, please commit us into the hands of the Lord.